This episode contains adult themes and is not appropriate for all audiences. Listener discretion is advised. Hello, the world. This is They Will Kill, a true crime podcast. I'm Sadie Eck. And I am Courtney Eck. And uh, you're going to hear a lot of knocking, maybe, from Courtney's yeah. end. I'm reporting from the inside of a, an active dryer, again. apparently. Yeah, yeah once again. Or, or snow is melting onto the tin roof of my tiny house, and it makes it sound like a dryer. Yeah, it kind of is like a... If people listen, I think some people listen to us when they're falling asleep. Yeah. So if you just like get into the rhythm of it. It is very rhythmic. <laughs> yeah. But also <laughs> tiny uh, tin roofs and tiny houses are adorable, but tin roofs um, are loud. It yeah. turns out they're they're loud. They're aesthetically mm-hmm. very pleasing, but you can't really do anything inside of them. Right. Like Specific- record a podcast. <laughs> yes, specifically recording a podcast. It's yeah. great. If all elements are stable uh, in the environment around the tiny house, because it's a mm-hmm. tiny house, so mm-hmm. it's really good soundproofing, but that never happens because it, it's the world. Well, do you want this has been my thesis tin on <laughs> tin roofs and tiny houses. <laughs> I am sure people are very interested to learn Riveted. more. Riveted. Maybe we yeah. should talk about the murder instead. I, I would love to tell you about the disappearance and murder of Jennifer Teague. So in Barhaven, Ontario, in September 2005, police received a call that 18-year-old Jennifer Teague had gone missing after her late shift at a local Wendy's. When she got off work, she met up to hang out with a couple of her friends in front of a local convenience store, which is something my friends and I did so much in our mm-hmm. teens. Mm-hmm. And then she set off to take her 10-minute walk home around 1 a.m. No one had heard from her since. Her cell phone had been turned off, and there had been no banking activity of any kind, so police were certain she hadn't just run off or decided to take some time for herself. Police immediately had a terrible feeling they weren't going to find Jennifer alive, so decided to approach the case as a homicide investigation and, quote, hit the ground running at 100 miles per hour. Good for them, and also, that's so sad. It's so sad, but also good for them. It's the difference between the American judicial system and the (laughs) Canadian judicial system, where we're like, nah, nah, we can't be bothered. And they're like, "Mm, this doesn't look good. Chances of us finding her alive are slim, so let's take it really fucking seriously. They set up their command in a local church, secured a helicopter, and broke into two teams, Half of the detectives in the field who were interviewing people and following up on tips, and the other half did an intensive search of the local area and waterways. They quickly identified two major suspects and set about questioning both. My eyes are really big over here, like, oh, Jesus. Especially (laughs) after my last few cases of, like, I don't know, what are you going to do? Exactly. Which job is it to... Look at evidence, not mine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. These guys are like, we're going to need a helicopter. We're going to need to split. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. This is so many just glaring discrepancies in how we approach cases in America versus how they do it in Canada. It comes yeah. up again and again in this story. So the first was Mark Corman, a coworker of Jennifer's, who had walked her part of the way home the night she went missing. Rumor had it that he had feelings for Jennifer that she didn't reciprocate. Another alarming detail was that when they brought Mark in for questioning, he had several scratches on his face and neck. Well, he probably just ran into a fence. Well, he said that he gave them to himself while shaving. <laughs> but I saw a picture scratches. of it. it. I mean, it looks crazy. I saw a photo and it looked crazy. I mean, I've had some bad shaving incidents, but not... Yeah, these are full, like, cat scratch oh, fever. Just... Yeah. <laughs> He Mark's... should have gone with the fence <laughs> story. <laughs> <laughs> Still the best possible. Uh, <laughs> Whoa, oh, my face. Yeah. Mark swore that his intentions with Jennifer were innocent and readily agreed to a polygraph, which he passed. 
He also brought in his razor for detectives to inspect, and they determined that he was actually telling the truth about the scratches <laughs> coming from the dull blade. Oh, come on, dude. Like, how, are, they, I just, are they, like, measuring his neck compared to the razor? Or, like... Well, based on the fact that they did, like, just went out guns blazing and, like, mm-hmm. spared no expense, I, I'm assuming yes. I think they actually, like, did some comparisons. And think about when you were, like, 18, 19 years old. How far did you stretch a fucking razor? Oh, a year. You know? Yeah. Like, yeah, you're basically, like, amputating parts of your body with it. <laughs> you're still using it because that's expensive. Well, you know, expensive. you probably didn't use soap. Or like water, precisely. Just, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. Just went, just went for he it. He's young. Yeah. He's a teen. He sleeps on a mattress with no sheets on. You know. I mean, I don't know that for sure, but yeah, you're a teen. You're an Milk early crates. adult. Right. Yeah. You, mm-hmm. Yes. You don't know how to do life yet. You're just, yeah. just like trial and error. Okay. I'll give the guy a break. Yep. So detectives said he presented as a sweet, honest kid who was embarrassed that his razor had done such a number on him. <laughs> And they ruled him out as a suspect pretty oh, quickly. Oh, buddy. I that, <laughs> like, that, I'm, I'm laughing, but it's not funny. It's like, uh, could you imagine if he got, if, they, if he, he was in America, he probably would have been locked up. And he was like, definitely, no, I swear, I'm just a terrible definitely. shaver. Please, no. <laughs> yes, that struck me as I was writing this immediately. Mm-hmm. Yes, if this had been in the United States, that kid would still be in prison. No yeah. question. Because it looked, I mean, it looked crazy. It looked like a woman ran her fingernails down his face. Yeah. What they would not have moved past it. Yep. Yeah. So the other main suspect was Boris Sterney, who Jennifer knew from around town and disliked very much. Peers from his high school reported that he had a history of stalking behaviors to the extent that a restraining order had been taken out against him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Jennifer's friend said he drove past she and Jennifer that night as they were sitting in front of the convenience store and Jennifer had flipped him off. Oh, no. Detectives reported that when they brought him in, Boris was very paranoid and suspicious and made their jobs very difficult while questioning him. Police discovered that Boris had a broken window in his car after Jennifer went missing and wondered if it could have been broken out during a struggle between the two. Boris furiously denied having anything to do with Jennifer's disappearance and also agreed to a polygraph. Despite his anger and defensiveness, Boris passed the polygraph and police didn't find any other evidence to tie him to the missing teenager. Damn it. Boris is sort of a menacing sounding name. Less, we would have locked that guy up immediately, yes. too. Yep. yep. Yeah, double. Boris is the most menacing name. Yeah. Double, vic- uh, no, double, what's that word? Uh, suspects. Jeopardy. <laughs> yeah, double <laughs> suspects. Uh, Boris, or only second to... Don- Donovan has a pretty menacing name. Yeah. Damien is the I most you menacing say Dante. name. <laughs> Dante. And yeah, you're mm-hmm. screwed. Mm-hmm. Although I really like those names, but I definitely, definitely like up to evil. Yeah. If I had to pick out of the name hat of a suspect and I got Boris, I'd be like, oh, it's him. Actually, now that I think about it, I would probably be less likely a Boris for sure. Less likely for Dante or Donovan, because that would just be like a West Memphis 3, like metal mm-hmm. kid. Yeah. But Chad, Brad, you're going to jail. <laughs> 100%. You know? Uh-huh. Yep. So despite a strong start and exhaustive search, days stretched on with no new suspects or sign of Jennifer, and detectives began to lose any hope of finding Jennifer alive. After six days of the massive search... Police were forced to scale back the investigation because of the amount of resources it was taking up. Around this time, Jennifer's father and stepmother showed up for an update, and police took the opportunity to interview them on their whereabouts that night. They learned that the couple went to a church baby shower that started at 7 p.m. The couple lived about 15 minutes away from the party location, but left around 6 p.m., 45 minutes earlier than they needed to to get there on time. They claimed they needed the extra time to stop and purchase a gift for the parents-to-be, and so left the house early. Yeah, likely story. Just kidding. (laughs) (laughs) Their story completely checked out, and they found absolutely no other evidence that the parents were involved, and so they moved on. 
Ten days after Jennifer went missing, an off-duty officer was jogging on a local trail and was hit by the distinctive smell he'd become familiar with during his time on the job. No, he didn't. Yeah, yes, the smell of human decay. The detective followed the location of the horrible odor and was devastated to find human remains. What are the chances? Right? I mean, it's always a jogger, but what are the, what are the chances that it was a off-duty yes. officer jogger? Wow, I mean, good, but awful. Yeah, yeah because if it was me... I would think it was a dead animal or a, what are those garbage lilies or those death lilies? Oh, you know? yeah. Mm-hmm. One time, my ex-girlfriend, the same one who's, I don't know if that was Patreon, where I was talking about the roommate whose father was like, trust no oh, one and right. had the bionic ear. Mm-hmm. That same house, <laughs> there was this horrifying smell in the front yard. We'd sit on the front porch and like gag. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> this gorgeous black huge black plant sprouted up right in front of the house and somebody did research and figured out that it was a death i think it's called like a death lily Mm -hmm. and they smell like rotting flesh you know it's like part of their whole ecosystem but anyway that thing is horrifying so i would just assume it was a (laughs) was like garbage plant and like keep on jogging right you know yes i would never i would never follow that smell no so police were immediately able to confirm that it was Jennifer's body they discovered. They made the decision to keep all of the details of their discovery a secret from the media, other than the fact that they had found her, to increase the chances of identifying the killer if an individual mentioned any of the specifics. Jennifer's body was found naked and face down in a remote swamp area, and she was badly decomposed to the point that there was no way to visually identify her or determine her time of death. I don't like that. No, it's so bad. They said that the rains and the weather just was bad. The only piece of evidence that they found on the scene was one of her earrings. There wasn't a single shred of clothing or belongings or DNA otherwise. The lead detective reports crying when he learned she'd been found and then redoubling the efforts of the force to catch her killer. Wow. So a woman named Ardeth Wood, who was a similar age and looked similar, had also disappeared in the Ottawa area a couple of years before Jennifer. And police still have... Her name is Ardeth? Ardeth, yeah. Isn't that a great name? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Police still hadn't found any sign of her or a perpetrator. Police knew that they had to consider that the cases were somehow connected as they moved forward with finding Jennifer's killer, and the community started to panic as it was very rare to have two disappearances like those right in a row, and rumors of a serial killer started circulating. The detectives working Jennifer's case were thrilled to learn that a suspect in Ardith's case had been apprehended soon after. Unfortunately... Their hopes were quickly dashed when they confirmed that the suspect in Ardith's case had been out of the area during the time Jennifer went missing. Damn it. This whole case was like, that's the guy. No, nope. totally not the guy. There's so <laughs> many so, <laughs> poor guys. Yeah. So police were extremely frustrated to have to continue to go back to square one with the investigation and made the decision to release the footage from inside the convenience store where Jennifer was last seen, as there were several customers from that night who were still not accounted for. The police were concerned that there could be privacy issues with releasing the images of the people shopping at the store that night, but decided to take the chance of a lawsuit as the potential of finding Jennifer's killer far outweighed the consequences. Right. Could you imagine suing the police because they showed a videotape <laughs> of you at the convenience store? <laughs> well, they were like... To solve a murder? Yeah. They were like, what are the odds that somebody's going to be mad that we release that they were shopping at a convenience store at one o'clock in the morning. Yeah. I mean, I but, appreciate them caring for sure. I That's, but I just can't I wouldn't imagine even... be like, I'm going to sue them. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> Those are my Cheetos. That's very private. <laughs> uh, well, and once again, you know, in the United States, it'd be like, whatever, co- yeah. come for us. Right? And in Canada, they're like, well, we should respect people's privacy. <laughs> well, you know? Canada so bad. Yeah. You know. They were able to generate a composite sketch from the 1,000 plus tips they received through releasing the images, and that led to a press conference which renewed interest in the case. Police were hoping to create the impression in the killer's mind that they were honing in on the case and they were close to catching the person who'd taken Jennifer's life. Luckily, their strategy worked. 
A few days later, police received a call from a hospital that they had a patient named Kevin Davis who'd confessed to Jennifer's murder, and they were eager to rush over and question the individual. Unfortunately, the patient was admitted on a mental health call because he was found running through a busy intersection, naked, screaming, quote, I killed Jennifer Teague, and he'd taken 10 grams of magic mushrooms, and it takes just two to, to hallucinate. Oh, no. Yes. Ooh. They said he almost got hit by a car several times. Oh, God. No, mm-hmm. thank you. Poor mm-hmm. guy. Mm-hmm. Assuming he didn't actually murder her. If he did, then he can go fuck himself. <laughs> <laughs> just covering my bases here. Yeah, yeah, you just never know, right? Right. Especially when it comes to being overdosed on magic mushrooms. Oh, yeah. Despite the frustration that came with having to wait until the patient was mentally well enough to be interviewed, it also meant that the confession was no good since he was so severely under the influence. I mean, duh, my God. If I got held accountable for things I said on mushrooms, Mom, I've taken mushrooms a couple times. Uh, (laughs) Uh I don't, yeah. No, I mean, I've done it once and I did too many and it made, I felt like, it, it was literally the hardest, one of the hardest physical nights of my life. Yeah, Sadie so and crazy. I were together. We both got convinced that we were taking mushrooms for the first time, and so we should take like an eighth or something insane. Yeah. Well, everybody we took them with was like having a great time, and we weren't feeling it, so we then took more. Don't take more. No, don't ever. Yeah, Mm-mm. yes, yes. Do not. Under- I mean, don't take no. them anyway. Shouldn't do drugs. Don't do drugs, Mm-mm. but if you do, take it slow. <laughs> Whoa. It was horrible. It was, it was awful. horrible. It was so awful. My friends turned into garbage and also Alice in Wonderland <laughs> and also the 4th of July. It was, yeah. yeah, it was terrible. And I'm glad I didn't run through the streets and say that I murdered oh somebody because I could have easily done that. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> So while they waited for clearance to speak with him, they started looking into his background and his whereabouts the night that Jennifer went missing. The first piece of information that jumped out at them was that he lived on the route that Jennifer walked to get home every day. No, oh, no. Kevin was finally released a week later and, no big surprise, immediately recounted his confession. He said that he'd never recounted? even met her. Recanted? Recanted. Okay. Yes. Sorry. Took it back. No problem. He said that he'd never even met her, but had heard about her case so much over the weeks that when he got high, he became convinced that he had something to do with her death. Ugh. Which is very reasonable. Like, yes. you definitely I see mean, like, I really don't know what yourself. to think. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Did he do it? Did he not? Because I really could have convinced myself I murdered somebody the one time yes. I had mushrooms. <laughs> yes. Yes. We won't go into all the details of our, our brief <laughs> dalliance with magic muffr- mushrooms, but... We came up with some pretty hilarious shit while we were high. (laughs) He claimed he'd recently broken up with a girlfriend and so had gotten high to try to break out of the funk he'd been stuck in since. He claimed he was at his friend Nick's house playing video games the night Jennifer went missing, and Kevin's mother confirmed he'd been at home when she went to bed and also when she got up the next morning. They followed up with Kevin's friend Nick, who had coincidentally been involved in a car accident that resulted in a major brain injury and amnesia, so he couldn't remember a single thing about that night. Are you kidding me? No. Wow. Either that's a really fucked up coincidence or a very smart alibi cover up. Wow. Unable to prove or disprove Kevin's alibi was another extremely frustrating setback, and the months crept on with no conclusive answers about what exactly happened. So in an attempt to once again drum up clues or evidence, police decided to ask all of the residents of the neighborhood where Jennifer disappeared if they would consent to searches of their homes and properties, (laughs) which is the craziest damn thing to imagine as an American. Yeah. Can you, I mean, no, No. the answer is no, no, (laughs) America, even me, even me was like, let that happen. No, fuck no. But they did. (laughs) They consented. They explained that they didn't care about the residents weed or their weird computer photos. (laughs) (laughs) They were specifically looking for evidence that would help find Jennifer's murderer and hundreds and hundreds of residents consented. Wow. Can you believe that? No, I really can't. 
it's so lovely. It's like the loveliest thing that you can trust each other to the extent that you're going to let the fucking police into your house and be like, yep, I see your bong over there and I see your weird stuff. And I, that's that fine. I'm not looking for that. Like, I, like a huge waste of time and resources to just well, do a blanket search. Are you just thinking that you're going to like find a murder weapon on the ground and some blood? Like, what do you know? I think it's just a case of they had to do something. So they said they'd searched the whole rest of the area all around that neighborhood. So it was lots of woods and, you know, um, they searched all of it mm-hmm. and they hadn't searched the neighborhood. And so I think it was just like, we need to do something and this is something to do, basically. Huh. Like, we need to keep the energy going. going. Yeah. And so let's try it. And then also you just never know, you know, like if you'll find you the, see the, the, the floor, <laughs> right. We could just find it. it's her whole outfit. I don't know, but yeah. you know, you just never yeah. know. So the search has succeeded in keeping the media's attention. And seven days later, police got the most massive possible break when Kevin Davis approached an off duty police officer and confessed again. Oh man. This time he was fully clothed and not hallucinating. Well, that's good. <laughs> that's a step yes. in the right direction. <laughs> yes. He walked up to the guy and said, uh, I'm about to make you famous. Oh, wow. Like, wow. Yep. So m- police were meticulous in reading Kevin his rights and explaining what his confession could mean. And he said that he was fine with the consequences and just wanted to get what he'd done off of his chest. He said he was so sick and tired of women hurting him and leaving him that he'd been driving around for weeks looking for a girl to take his rage and frustrations out on. No. Uh, Yeah. No. After being hurt by women for so long, he said he just wanted to hurt them back, so randomly selected a teenage girl to rape and kill. Oh my god. You fucking kidding me? No. Nope, he just wow. had his feelings hurt. He was really, really sad. Oh my god. The detective said he kept Kevin talking for as long as possible to secure a perfect confession for when they went to court. They brought Kevin to the scene of the crime and had him walk them through the events of that night. He said he followed Jennifer as she walked away from the convenience store and chose her as his victim as the street wasn't very well lit and no one was around. So he took the opportunity to attack and abduct her. She was literally just in the wrong place at the wrong time. God. He brought Jennifer home to his bedroom, which was in the room next to his mother's. No. His mom has sleep apnea, so takes heavy medication to sleep and was unconscious through the entire attack. No. He said he blindfolded Jennifer and tied her hands behind her back and decided not to go through with his original plan of raping her. I don't know. This is really sad. He said she started saying, quote, I have to get going. My mother's waiting for me. He then strangled her to death, wrapped her body in his grandmother's quilt, and brought her to the dump site in the trunk of his mother's car while she slept. Kevin was able to identify the exact spot where Jennifer's body was found, which had never been released to the public. They also said they like brought him to the trail and and went in the opposite direction. I think I'd bring this up later. They went in the opposite direction and he turned around and brought them to the right direction, you know, so they didn't lead him there. They were very careful not to lead him and like make sure the full confession was perfect. They also found Jennifer's discman in Kevin's home. Originally, Kevin said he wanted to plead guilty to first degree murder, but when police met with him to go over some final details of the case, he recanted his confession again, claiming he hadn't slept for three days before the second confession and had made the whole thing up. Nope. You don't get any more redos. No. So they, they did remind Kevin that he had perfectly located where he dumped the body, despite the fact that police had led him to a different trail and police then lost their damn minds. <laughs> In the end, Kevin did plead guilty to first-degree murder, saying he wished he could give up his life in exchange for Jennifer's. Too late. Well, give me a fucking break. Jennifer's family, yeah. Jennifer's family questioned the sincerity of the confession, but decided to accept the plea to avoid trial. During the confession, Jennifer's mother was devastated to learn that her final words were that her mom would be worried about her. Mm -hmm. 
Kevin was sentenced to life in prison, but because it's Canada, that amounts to 14 and a half minutes. <laughs> and so he'll be eligible for parole in 2031. Ugh. A couple positive things came out of Jennifer's murder. One is that Wendy's and other fast food chains now offer to pay taxi services for late night employees who need a ride. Is that true here too? I don't think so. We can't (laughs) even pay people for the time that they spend doing the jobs to make people billions and billions of dollars, let alone additional taxi service to keep them safe. Quote, her family also received counseling, up-to-date information from police officers, and anything else that would prepare them for the trial. That didn't happen, thank God. However, this isn't something that every family who has lost someone to murder receives. So Jennifer's stepmother is working on proposing a bill on victims' rights. With the help of Victims of Violence, a charity providing support to victims of violent crimes as well as support to their families, the Teagues have been pushing for the elimination of the, quote, faint hope clause. It was a bill which was repealed in 2011 that allowed murderers to pursue early parole after only 15 years in prison. Jennifer's mother's world was completely turned upside down by her murder. The crime has affected her ability to enjoy what used to be routine family activities, shopping, participating in a hockey pool, celebrating birthdays and Christmas, she said. Quote, my family and I have tried to keep our traditions intact as much as possible. At Christmas, we each get an ornament for the tree. We continue to get one for Jennifer, and I put it on the tree for her. When we take the tree down, we put the ornament in her container, and we are saving them for the first female grandchild. Oh, this is so sad. It's so sad. The poor mom. I mean, the lead detective was like, I just sobbed for her. She oh. really made an impact on him. She's by herself. You know, this yes. just really d- just destroyed her. Ugh. Mrs. Teague said it has been especially painful to watch her two sons deal with the loss of their only sister. The oldest Kevin was the only family member to attend the preliminary hearing at which the details of the killing were first disclosed. Mrs. Teague said he was so disturbed by what he heard, he was unable to attend the second course proceeding. I don't blame him for a second. Court court proceeding, sorry. Yeah, no, God, no. You'd think they would bring the family aside and be like, here, if like you're planning to hear it, let me tell it to you first, sort of yeah. thing. Yeah, well, I'm sh- yeah. Ugh. I'm sure they probably prepped him and said, yeah. it's going to get gruesome, you know. Do you really, I mean, nobody else went, and he was probably like, I need to be the man, or, you yeah. know, who knows. That's so sad. The youngest, Carrie, told the court his once sunny outlook on life has been seriously damaged by his sister's killing. Quote, I've seen close up how cruel, senseless, and unforgiving this world so often is, he said in his impact statement. I was always hesitant to meet new people because I was shy. Now I'm hesitant because part of me fears getting too close to them and then losing them, as I did Jen. (sighs) Jennifer's murder has also had a devastating impact on many of her friends, the court was told. Alicia Blais, B-L-A-I-S, who was the one who met Jennifer at the convenience store that night, said she suffers from frequent panic attacks, sleeplessness, and nightmares. Quote, this crime has affected almost every aspect of my life, she said in a statement read by Deputy Crown Attorney Vicki Bear. It has changed me entirely. Another friend, Amy Picknell, also wrote about sleepless nights, missing work, loneliness, and trouble making it through many days. Quote, it's so hard to be out in public, her statement said, going for a walk or sitting on the bus and hearing complete strangers talking about her without bursting into tears. No. So that is the f- fucked up story of poor, sweet Jennifer Teague. I hate that story. And the f- lack of coping skills of stupid fucking Kevin Davis. I just, I just don't understand. No. How, you know. No. How, pff, how people are raised to not be able to handle their emotions whatsoever. Or, or to feel so entitled right? to revenge, uh, you know, like, yeah, to yeah. have all of that anger inside and be like, I know what will make me feel better is to murder somebody. Right. That's super upsetting. Yeah. Yes, we have to do a better job. We have to yes. do a better job. These kids who, you know, I'm assuming, I don't know anything about his relationship with his father, but, you know, he lived with his mother 
and it seemed like she might have been a bit of an enabler, and he just didn't know how to not be okay. You know, it's totally fine to be devastated and hurt and feel bad, and it sucks, man. It sucks when you're young and you get your heart broken, but you just keep trying, you know? You right. just, like, yeah. go find somebody else to date and learn from the experience or whatever. You don't fucking kill somebody. No. You don't stalk and murder some random poor woman. No. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. gotta teach your kids how to be uncomfortable and have yep. hard feelings. Like, yes. <laughs> you have to. I mean, like, but I think it's, you know, I know it's something I struggle with every day with them is that you want to make it okay or you want them to stop doing that, like having those feelings because you weren't taught how to have them when you were children. And, right. You know, it's a huge problem. And yeah. thank God that most people who are enabled or abused or whatever in their childhood don't go on to like picking sweet innocent people off the street and killing them right like, i'm glad that's not the go-to for being fucked up because we'd be right. in big trouble right but jesus christ like yeah and it's it's only getting worse i mean now you yeah. have the internet and the dark web and lots of dark fucked up places to go find people who are also in yes. pain who are encouraging you to do, hor- to do horrible yeah. things yeah get yourself into an echo chamber of yep. terribleness yeah we have to make the alternative much more desirable yep. you know you have to make feeling your feelings and being brave and accountable more desirable than being an incel or something you right yeah and that's wow. going to take a lot of fucking work from a lot of people on a lot of levels yeah sure is but we can do it we can do it yeah we don't have a choice we have to do it <laughs> yeah <laughs> we gotta look right now yep oh, oh boy well thanks for that one you sure are welcome and also not welcome i know kind of bummed that he just didn't have a bad mushroom trip that he that he was <sighs> just a fucking terrible person Yes, but once again, in America, they never would have given him the benefit of the doubt. They'd be no. like, tough shit, dude, you confessed. Yeah. I mean, the, the words came out of your mouth, naked, running through traffic. Yep, you're, you're fucked. Guy. Yep, and get also, in there with Boris and Scratchneck. Yeah. You're all, you're all in on it together somehow. We don't know how, but we're just going to plant some evidence and figure <laughs> it out. <laughs> no. 100%. Yeah, and he would have gotten away with it it sure seems like if he had just been quiet i mean unless his mom was like sure come search my house because that's what canadians do right they found her 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 belongings yeah yeah Mm -hmm. still Mm -hmm. if he had just been quiet i know i'm always amazed by people who confess but i think i you know i would confess i I would would there's no way there's no way Uh, yeah there's no way um but it is amazing to me. Like I, Chris Watts, that's the craziest thing about that story. If he hadn't confessed, they never would have found those girls. Never, ever, ever. Yep. You put him in the bottom of the fucking oil pan. Yes. <laughs> you know, spoiler, spoiler alert. Um, yeah. But if you're listening to this and you don't know the Shanann Watts case, right, then, then you need to go back to true crime get, 101. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah. Although I mean I think he they maybe they probably wouldn't have ever found the girls, but they definitely they would have arrested him. Found. Like, yeah, but yeah. they would have had no bodies. You know, right. it would have been really hard to convict him. Extremely yeah. hard. They didn't really have enough otherwise. But yeah, I'm sh- I'm just shocked he confessed. Still and elated. Thank God. Yep. Well, he's he had it douchebag all f- figured out. Like I'll just yep. blame my innocent wife and. They'll let me go because I'm good looking. Sick. Yeah. Um, what do we got going on over here? Um, I have one correction. It's not it's... Dick Sweet, it's Dick Sweat, guys. <laughs> <laughs> the New Hampshire congressman's last name is Sweat, which is so much better. <laughs> Damn it, autocorrect. Damn I typed it. it into my notes and it said, no, no, no. His name couldn't possibly be Dis- Dick Sweat. That's too perfect. <laughs> it's got to be Dick Sweet, which is hilarious, but not nearly as hilarious. Dick, Dick the, Sweat. <laughs> New, New Hampshire Congressman Dick Sweat. <laughs> Poor guy. <laughs> he has a lot of slow him down, though. No, he's, it's New Hampshire. I feel like that's a good place to have to be a congressman with the last Was it New Hampshire or Wisconsin? I think it was New Hampshire. Okay. For some reason, I heard I mean, Wisconsin in my brain. 
No, I'm sure. I heard you say Wisconsin, but I think it's just my brain's misfiring. <laughs> Trust me. I, I very well could have this bit wrong as well. And I'm very open to issuing another correction if that's the case. Um, and also there's a lawyer named Michael Swindler. <laughs> don't trust him, guys. Uh, don't trust him for a second. I wonder if he plays off of it. You know, does is it like does he make right? Does he have commercials a sense of humor or about it? it? Right? Yeah. yeah. Hopefully, I mean, I love lawyer commercials. I love local commercials. Who doesn't? But that would be a really bad missed opportunity if he didn't. Right? You know. So sure. Don't <laughs> let him swindler you. Call Michael Swindler. <laughs> That's what I would say if I was him. <laughs> Duh. Did you get swindlered? Call Michael Swindler. (laughs) Just pretending like the word is, like, that's how it works. Yep. It's a verb or an adverb instead of a noun. Oh, shit, balls. (laughs) Are you a swindler? Then you should be afraid of Michael Swindler. I'll get you. (laughs) Wink. I hope he hires us. Maybe we, we should contact him and be like, hey, we're going to sponsor you. Yeah. No, you're going to sponsor us? I don't know how that goes. Uh, I would not. pay. I would pay to participate <laughs> in his ad campaign. No question. We can we can do his ads for him and he can advertise yeah, just for give us. us cr- I don't know. Just give us credit. Just like advertise they will kill at the bottom. You know, like creative's worst thing is working for exposure. <laughs> we don't like it. But right. I would like it in this case. I would take that exposure. Yes. Yeah. 100%. (laughs) This is so dumb, but I was thinking yesterday about the fact that now that we're mom ages, like you're a mom and we're Mm -hmm. all the age of moms, like a fish, like... Like totally 100% middle-aged. Exactly. Uh We're not like young moms. We're actual moms now. Yep. Do do we say garbage and tarje? No. Do we say it? Does it get said? No. Do you say it? it? No, but do people our age say it? Do moms our age say that now? Because that's no. how old our moms were when they said garbage and tarje. No, because our mom said it and we will never say those words. I want to hear from the rest of the world. Are you mm-hmm. out there saying, hey, hey kids, you take out the garbage? <laughs> no, they're never going to admit like, to it because I just shot it down so hard. They're going to be like, I can't admit that I say garbage. And Tarje. It's one of the Tarje. I bet you money people say it. I bet you. I don't You know, think you I can would help say it, it if I had teenagers. Like if I had That's what te- I mean. Yes. Yeah. I think I would say it just to annoy the annoy shit out them. Of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I don't but, I think it might be in your DNA as a mother. I think that you probably can't not say it. I feel like it comes out when your kids are like t- 12 or 13 and you're just ready to humiliate them. Yeah. And you've lost all like recollection of being cool it's gone by that point like it is gone (laughs) yeah i mean i do already now especially with my six-year-old if there's something that embarrasses him not like him i don't tease him or like none of that shit Mm -hmm. but um if i do something that he thinks is embarrassing i definitely do it again and again so i could see yes if i said tarje and he was like oh mom i'd be like "Mm -hmm, okay Mm -hmm. here we go buddy I'm going to say it in front of your friends every chance I get. Yeah. But luckily, he's still young enough that when he says he doesn't like it, he really kind of does. And he kind of wants me to continue. So Yeah. Yeah. No, for sure. Yeah. They, yeah. God, it's weird. <laughs> <laughs> it's just weird. I think about it all the time. Like, these kids don't even know that we're cool. You know? <laughs> they just don't. They never will. They never will. Maybe when they're like our age, then you start to be like, oh shit, that person's fucking awesome. Like Fran Lebowitz or something. You're like, well, right. tell me everything, you yeah. know? I'd but be surprised. You're... You know, we have a, a group of cousins that's like a generation, not a generation, a, yeah, I think a generation, generation lower. lower. They're like 18 years younger than us. Yeah. So, and I'm, we reconnected with them. They were like in high school age and we were in our 30s. Right. Um, it had been a long time since we'd seen each other, and I just assumed they'd be like, "Ugh, there's our old Boring, cousins." Old. And they were. I mean, and it's because our family's so sweet, and they're such yeah. such good people. But they were like genu- genuinely interested in us, and thought yeah. maybe we were a little cool. And I was. It made me feel so not like good. I was like, "Holy it's shit!" Same. <laughs> God. Cause Seriously. Who, yeah. Like what teens take interest in their older, older cousins? Cousin. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then a lot of our cousins listen. Hey guys, we love you. 
And we love you. Sorry that you're learning how uncool we are through this podcast. No, the point is we're cool. We're actually are cool. We do. We've done interesting things and continue yeah. to do them. But kids can't see it. They can't. Unless they're cool cousins like our cousins <sighs> who aren't kids yeah. anymore. Yeah, like I get. I don't give a shit about getting older. I have zero yeah. fucking problem yeah. with that. Wrinkles, all. I mean, I'll probably get a little Botox eventually, but that's just like more of a like putting on makeup for ease of makeup put of right. application, you know, or whatever. But. I don't um, fucking care. I mean, no. 60, 70, no. Right. But erasure is a problem. You know, like, <laughs> people not being able to see you anymore oh, is a Oh, I thought you meant erasure, like the band. The band. <laughs> I was like, why Another, is that The a opposite of a problem. <laughs> They're the fucking best. Yeah, for sure. Or, you, you're not. You know? Yeah. You're not, yeah, you to not be able to be anymore. seen. Mm-hmm. Right, right. And you're like, uh, hello, I'm ex- exponentially cooler than you. I've done so many fucking things and yep. you've done zero things. Yep. You just have like a tighter bod, <laughs> <laughs> you know, get mm-hmm. over yourself. Yeah. It's so, it's just a very interesting, also you care less, like I, you know, yeah. you don't care as much about what people think, but it is, it is a, a an experience to like get older. Uh, have people assume, yeah, that you're not cool, but just because you're a little bit older yep i hear that i know i was i feel like i was born at like 35 so at this point i'm just sort of like slightly mm-hmm. older older than i started <laughs> so it's like whatever no that's the trick of it it's like yeah. we, i've said this before but we're all the same age that we were when we we're little mentally you don't old, you don't age the other trick is that you don't know how fucking fast it goes God, so it's like isn't that the truth you know the difference between 25 and 45 is in zero amount of time so mm-hmm. 25 year olds don't know that they don't know that they're they're fucked it's over <laughs> you know <laughs> buckle up babies yeah they don't know they don't simultaneously don't know how young they are and how little time they have yeah because it's whoosh, whoosh, gone yeah i know um but yeah. then yeah also it doesn't get good until you're in your mid to late 30s it yeah. gets so fucking awesome so if you're in your 20s oh boy you have so much to look forward to yeah i'll never forget being 24 and i really at 24 i was like i got it figured out and oh yeah full adult oh yeah i have like i I know exactly what i want and yep no no that's not how this works no you're gonna live you don't know 25 lifetimes yeah Yep. Yeah, my six year old the other the other day, he was like, Mom, I'm pretty much an adult now. <laughs> he kind of is right though. Yeah. He's so precocious. <laughs> yeah. He kid's... was born at like forty five. Yes. Uh, but yeah, he was like, I'm I'm pretty much an adult now. And I was like, Oh, okay. Well, that's un- upsetting <laughs> for your mother. <laughs> well, he's gonna <laughs> be just like me. Six. Yeah, but I was yeah. like so serious until I was like twenty seven and then mm-hmm. I just fucking went off the party rails and just had yep. so much fun. I mean, you know, within reason. I was still like running a fucking corporation and stuff, <laughs> yeah. but <laughs> you know, yeah, I you loosened start... up slightly. <laughs> yes. I didn't yeah. start having a lot of fun until I was like twenty seven and just like not caring and mm-hmm. uh being less introverted and things until I was much, much older. And he's, I think he's going to be exactly the same way. Yep, like reading right. fucking S- Steppenwolf and shit when you're in junior <laughs> high. You know, and then you get to your 27 and you're like, Vanderpump rules all the time. (laughs) Cannot possibly read another piece of actual literature again. It's all Ruth Ware from here on out. (laughs) Fuck yeah. Gone girl, period. (laughs) Do you know who else rules? Our shout outers, our Patreon supporters. Yes. Give them to me. All right. Thank you so much to Angie M. Angie Ma- um, magnificent or maleficent because when we were sitting there with mushrooms <laughs> <laughs> our friend turned to me and said oh you look like the evil queen from snow white <laughs> and i pictured her in my mind and she's so beautiful and i said oh you mean the beautiful one <laughs> and so that is forever uh something that our friends say to each other yeah because it was so funny i wasn't referring to my own personal beauty i was referring to maleficent's actual beauty i mean the beautiful one so you are angie maleficent aka the beautiful one yeah uh thank you so much to liz w liz wonderful wonder woman (laughs) she's also the beautiful one 
Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, God. Come on. Is there anybody? Look, I was actually talking to somebody about um, Gal Gardo the other day and how she's not a good actor, but she's so pretty that nobody cares. Like, right. she's so charismatic. Her mm-hmm. face sparkles like this brightest diamond. So <laughs> she can do whatever she wants. Yes. And I love the first Wonder Woman. Uh, the second one is really, really bad, but total garbage. Yeah. Still, her face is so sparkly and perfect. Nobody cares. Nope. It's like Clooney. Clooney doesn't really actually act very much. He's just Clooney. Shut your mouth. And that's plenty. No, I'm kidding. Yeah, he's. I love him. Oh, I love him. I love him with every fucking ounce of my soul. But yeah. it's not because he's got like amazing <laughs> acting chops. Because he smiles really, really well. Right. His twinkles. His <laughs> eyes twinkle. Speaking of eyes twinkling, uh, last but not least. Thank big, big, big thank you to Tonya Day- W. <laughs> Tonya, also Wonder Woman. Oh. We got two Gal Gardos in our presence. Yes. So thanks. she says big, big thank you because she's p- Patreoned a lot, and also we're related to her. So right. not that she's more important than the rest of you, but yep, she she's in our family. So she gets extra. she doesn't have to thanks. pay us. So it's really sweet that she does. <laughs> so nice. <laughs> Oh, so thanks to all of you uh, who helped support our little show. That's so much. At this point. Oh, I think when this one comes out, we will be an official one year old. Oh, my podcast. God. Happy birthday. Happy, happy birthday. Happy birthday. That's a creepy thing for mini pops. Yes. We did have one. I think our, our uh, Arcada Eureka listener had the mini pops final album oh, yes up. she did we brought that up a long time ago now that we have more listeners does anybody from the uk did you watch the show mini pops it only had like one or two seasons because it was really exploitive of young children and kind of mm-hmm. weirdly sexual mm-hmm. but sadie and i were obsessed with it i mean obsessed with it as mm-hmm. kids so yep. what about happy you? birth to us mini pop style yep so keep an eye out uh we'll have probably by this point we'll have a giveaway going on yeah, uh, one year membership to our patronage. <laughs> yes, uh, I'll keychains and a, a, and a sundry of other things. Yes, <laughs> various and sun, various and sundry. So I said, I don't, time, ages I don't know. timed, <laughs> ages timeless. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was that a Patreon. No, that no, was that was yes, yeah, that, that was, was today. last time. Yeah. <laughs> okay, babies. Uh, in the meantime. Uh, keep an eye out for all that shit on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at They Will Kill. Go to our website, theywillkill.com, and email us at theywillkillpodcast at gmail.com. Rate, review, subscribe, please. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, thank you to AJ Bergantz for our music. Yeah. And remember. Um, so our mom told me the other day that she, <laughs> our mom is notoriously really bad at uh, ordering through a drive through <laughs> like really bad at it. She would admit she it. Basically, if she was sitting here with us, she would agree. Uh, she'd pee her pants laughing at how bad she is at it. Yeah. She like sort of just jumbles up the ingredients of something and uh-huh. doesn't, just, rather than saying like a dipped chocolate cone, she'd be like, ice cream, uh, chocolatey, hard, you uh-huh. know, just like, yeah. um, like, <laughs> you need to tell them like, how to build it. <laughs> yeah. But they don't want the ingredients. <laughs> no. So, <laughs> She ordered, she's like, um, I'll have just a plain old Big Mac recently. Just a plain old Big Mac. <laughs> Which they interpreted as a plain no. Big Mac. No. A, yes. She didn't admit this to me. <laughs> yes. So she's in the car, like on a road trip with her father and opens up a fucking <laughs> two pieces of burger, four, whatever, three or four pieces of dry, dry bread. <laughs> You're no ketchup, no lettuce, no, no secret cheese, sauce. Oh my god. N- nothing. Meat, <laughs> bread. That's it. I'll just, I'll just I have was, a plain old Big Mac. I'll just have a plain old Big Mac. <laughs> yes, you will. She dry ate that motherfucker. Just, no, oh, she didn't. Yeah, yes. I was like, did dad, did you go back? And she's like, no, we're right. You know, like sob laughing. So her on her set. Interstate. I'm like, you wouldn't even go get you one packet of ketchup bread. And, no, I said it. Dry, oh my giant God. bread meat. That's it. So be no. careful, you guys. You yeah. have to be very careful when you're ordering a 
plain old especially big a big mac. i just have a plain old big mac oh my god that's so funny <laughs> Poor so mom. that let allow that to be a cautionary tale <laughs> she she would be happy to know that somebody learned from her mistakes listen somebody's like listening to this in the car right now pulling into a mcdonald's like <gasps> i almost made a terrible mistake <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, right. Everybody's like extra sauce, extra everything. Never yes. plain, never plain. <laughs> With like a fully, fully realized Big Mac. <laughs> fully realized. <laughs> we love you, everybody. Yeah, we love you. See Thanks you for soon. Listening. Hots, hotties. Hot, Goodbye. Hot, hot potatoes. <laughs> hot, hot, hot potatoes. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye.